So now one thing is that Hertzian uh, equation has made many assumptions. And one of the assumptions was that the, the two surfaces when they are in contact, there is no other force but the normal force. So for example, normal force is L. So L is acting on these two surfaces, but there is no force other than L. But in actual practice, in all the real situation, you will see that there is another force that is acting and that is the adhesive force between the two surfaces because two solids will always attract each other. So this has been found for, for a long time that two solids will um, attract each other and this is what is known as adhesion or adhesive force and it is very important in the case of tribology for example friction and wear uh, as well as in other areas like uh, for example if you are studying uh, adhesives or uh, coatings the glues and so on so it is very very important in this in case the adhesive force that is acting between the two surfaces so this force has not been considered in Hertz equation but actually it is important so there is another analysis which is known as JKR model or Johnson Kendall Roberts model for adhesive contacts. That means when adhesion becomes important. So adhesion will become important when one of the surfaces is soft or has lower elastic modulus. So for example, if I have a ball of elastomer or rubber on steel surface then this will deform quite a lot so since the contact area is very large this this situation becomes important as far as adhesion is concerned so this is one situation where the adhesive force will be very very important and in tribology we always deal with uh, hard materials as well as soft materials even metals like uh, there are many metals which are soft like aluminium um, magnesium and so on so this situation will give rise to another force which is the adhesive force and the adhesive force is a result of the surface forces and the surface forces actually lead to what is known as surface energy So for solids, every solid has got, as well as liquid, as atoms here. So atoms are arranged in some fashion. And these atoms has got, for example, if I talk about an atom which is inside, in the material, this atom has got some fixed number of atoms in, in its neighborhood. So therefore some forces are acting between them and this is in equilibrium. But if we talk about an atom which is here, it has got forces acting from these sides but no atom on the top. So let's say this is the top layer of atoms. So no atom from the top. So this, this force is lacking here. So because of this reason, this atom is prone to make some connection or some bonding with anything that is outside so so that means this is in a way this is uh, unsaturated and this acts like a force so this atom is prone to make bonding and often the bondings are physical bonding not chemical bonding so so that's the reason why these solids will attract uh, anything like a vapor or gases, gas molecules or, or um, dust particles. <clears throat> so now if another surface comes and this also surface also has got these uh, atoms here. So there will be attractive interaction between them and this is, gives rise to uh, the surface forces. That means two solids will attract each other and and because of this reason 
this surface has got some surface energy involved because it is in the energetically high it has got some energy or which is also known as surface free energy that means this energy is always there on this surface and different surfaces have got different surface free energy surface free energy explanation is similar to the case of surface tension in liquids so in liquids you must have studied about surface tension so again the explanation is same that liquids has got these atoms and molecules and the top one has got free ending here there is no other atoms to interact and therefore it acts like a force and this acts like a tension so the liquid surface on the top is under tension another definition in um, in this area is for work of addition so work of addition is defined as the free energy changes or reversible work done to separate two unit areas of two surfaces or media from contact to infinity in a vacuum so if you have got two surfaces two media let's say this s1 and s2 and now i in vacuum i operate in vacuum and i separate them to the infinity so we we took them to infinity so the work done in separating this that means initially they were together so it was an interface between s1 and 2 s2 but now when i separate them then s1 is independent here and s2 is independent here so these surfaces are free now they are not they are interface now it is an interface between the solid one and air or uh, if we talk about vacuum so there is no air here so this surface is free now this is free here they were not free because they were close close to each other so they had made some physical bonding together so the energetic uh, energetic states of this one is different from here and here even though they are the same materials okay so in vacuum to do this work to separate s1 and s2 solids s1 and s2 and create this surface and if this surface is unit area then it will be known as work of addition which is sometimes written as w12 or even g12 so this is the definition of work of addition this will be positive because we have to do positive work to separate them reverse of this will be if we bring these two solids together forming an unit area then that will be reverse of the work of addition in magnitude it will be the same because it is reversible work but in uh, sign it will be minus whereas this one is positive so work of addition by definition is positive so if work of addition is between two different materials so as we were talking about s1 and s2 so in that case we write w12 and we call it work of addition but if it's the same material s1 and s1 in that case we write w11 and in this case we call it work of cohesion cohesion means when two same material come together cohesive forces act together so adhesive force when the two surfaces are different two solids are different and the cohesive force when the two solids are same material so in that case it's w11 so this is the way we write and surface energy of the solids so gamma s for example is the free energy change when the surface area of a medium is increased by unit area so surface area is initially like this and if i increase this by unit area then the free energy change of this surface is known as the free energy of the solid okay so this situation is equivalent to separating two half unit surfaces from contact as that uh, so we may write so this is same as for example 
creating one unit surface is same as having two halves so one half here and half one half here creating two halves of the surfaces so here we were talking about w12 when these two surfaces have been created or unit surface has been created so if we are talking about half then this will become gamma s will become half of w12 here w11 because we are talking about one material so roughly we can define the surface energy of a solid as half of the work of addition okay. so this is the definition for this one in the case of liquid we talk about surface tension so in that case we write gamma l in the case of solid we write gamma s in the liquid we write gamma l even though uh, they are basically same thing is equal to half w11 so this is important for us to understand before we go further so work of addition surface energy and then surface tension and the units is basically energy per unit area so it is given as millijoule per meter square in the case of surface tension for liquids we are used to this definition milli newton per meter okay but if you look at the these two units dimensionally they are same they are basically energy per unit area so dimension dimensionally they are same but we define surface energy by these units and surface tension by these units surface energy basically leads to surface forces that means attractive force between the two surfaces so if there are two solids and we have applied some load here but there is an additional load which is because of the surface energy so total energy of a contact of a sphere on a flat surface is the sum of reduction in surface energy due to real contact by the last uh, due to real contact by elastic deformation of the solids and the strain energy stored due to elastic deformation so if two surfaces are coming in contact two things are happening one is the surface energy is lowering because now they are making interface initially they were separate so when they are coming together the this interface has been formed and this is some change in the surface energy Okay. And another thing is happening is the elastic strain energy is being stored because the, these two solids are deforming in elastically and therefore some strain energy will be stored because it will have some strain energy. So total energy is combination of these two. So the, at equilibrium the overall elastic deformation is constant. So if we assume that there is a equilibrium, there is no more change in the uh, in the energy. So the and the equilibrium contact radius A naught occurs when this condition is satisfied. So when the total energy uh, del U T over del A is equal to differential of this one is equal to zero. That means there is no change. So th when this condition is satisfied, so the equilibrium contact radius will be formed. Sir, uh, in this case, uh, so when two surfaces come in contact, sir, so its uh, mm, adhesive force increases. Uh, so sir, its, its surface energy should be increased, but here it, it's decreasing. Mm. So, so when two surfaces are uh, apart then they have some um, energy here associated but when they come in contact and as that um, as the contact area is increasing so this is the interface initially it was interface with the air but now these two solids are interfacing with each other so depending upon the situation depending upon solids the interfacial energy um, the overall energy will may increase or decrease because now you know the when the two surfaces are uh, free they have got 
surface energy associated. But when we bring them together, some surface energy will be reduced yeah, in general because they have that initially they had the tendency to make some bond. Now they have established those bonds. So initially the bonds were unsatisfied. Now they have established some physical bond between the two, the atoms of the two surfaces. So therefore the overall energy, free energy will reduce. Right? This is something that they, they would like to do. Yes. But there may be a situation, maybe a material which, um, two materials, maybe a situation where they would not like to do. But this, uh, I don't have any example. And normally, when we talk about work of radiation, this is always a positive work because two solids always want to be together. They want to come together. So when we are separating, we are, have to do some positive work on it. Therefore, by definition, work of addition is positive. So, in case of magnet, with when the same poles are uh, coming near, so it's that time the surface energy should be increased. No? Uh, so, the magnet situation is different because in the magnet's case, it is either it is attractive or repulsive, right? Yes, but sir. in the case of this two solids, it is the unsatisfied bonds. So these bonds are unsatisfied because they have, this one has got uh, bond, um, atoms on these sides, but no atom on this side. And similarly for another solid, this has got atoms on all sides, but not here. So therefore they have an interaction and this interaction is attractive in nature. Yeah. So, so normally, and these forces are called Van der Waals forces. Uh, so Van der Waals forces are attractive in nature because the origin is because of these unsatisfied bonds. But if these forces were because of, let's say, electrostatic charges, let's say I've got one solid here, one solid here, and they have got some positive charge created and positive charge created. In that case, there will be some repulsive. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this can happen in tribological situation, but we don't consider the magnet. Magnet is, is, a, is a different case. So uh, yes, when you design your surfaces with magnet in them, then of course you know whether it is attractive or repulsive forces. But here, mostly we are talking about Van der Waals forces and later this electrostatic attraction also can be included here. So work of radiation because of surface forces is always positive.